I caught COVID, how I coped and cleaned during that time. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by Savvy Cleaner Training, where we take you on a journey through starting a house cleaning business all the way through until you sell your house cleaning business on the other side for a profit. So check it out at SavvyCleaner.com. All right, on to today's show. I caught COVID. It was at the end of June, 2020, and my husband came home in the middle of the business day, and he said, I think I have COVID, I'm going to go lie down. And I kind of just froze for a second. And I said, what does that mean? If you think you have COVID, and this morning before you left for work, I touched all the same refrigerator handles and the same stair rail handles going down the stairs, and the same shower door handles and the same faucets in the bathroom, what are the odds that I also have COVID? Now, I didn't have a fever. And so for me personally, my first fear was, if he has it, do I have it as well? And am I well enough to take care of him? Okay, that was my thinking process. My second thinking process was what about my team? Because I have people that come by my house all day, every day, and they're picking up discs, they're dropping off discs, they're doing things for the business, they're in and out of the house. And since March of 2020, we've been keeping our social distance. And so if they come over to the house, they only touch the things that they touch. And we stand six feet apart and all of our meetings have been standing up with distance between us. When they leave, I wipe and sanitize everything down and we go on to the next day so that there are no germs passed from day to day. So I stopped in my head and I said, has it been 72 hours since any of those people were over? And the answer was yes. So the backtracking then was in my husband's business. Who was he in contact with? Was it a customer? Was it a business person? Was it a salesperson? Who was in his realm of influence that may have given him COVID or may have caught COVID from him? And so my husband went on the way home from work. He came home early. He, when he got tested on the way home. Well, the reason that I was so afraid is my husband has not called in sick in 21 years. And so for him to come home in the middle of the business day and say, I think I have COVID, that is not a good sign, okay? Right up front, I went on high alert. Okay, so call and cancel your team. Don't let anyone come over to the house. This is now an isolation hub. No one gets to come in or out for the next two weeks. So I was unsure if my husband actually had COVID because he just went and got tested. He would not have the results back until the following day. Well, the following day he got up and I, I have to preface this by saying he is OCD. He is the most careful person on the planet. So he will not catch, he will not catch COVID. He's been wearing a face mask. He's been wearing gloves. <laughs> he sanitizes several times in between every opportunity. There's no way on earth he could catch COVID, right? I myself am on high alert. I'm not paranoid and I'm not a fanatic, but I myself am on high alert. So of the two people that I thought would catch COVID, it is not us, okay? First and foremost, it is not us. Well, the next day his test results came back positive and he went and he got tested again because it must be wrong. When he was waiting for the second test, he said, do you have any symptoms at all? And I said, no, I don't really have any symptoms at all, except, and I'd been for a couple of days, I've been feeling that somebody was just ripping my heart right out of my chest, but I just wiped it away as saying, well, that's, that's part of being a business owner. And my, my rationalization is that during COVID-19, during the 2020 spring, it has been the most boom of business for me. And it has been the most trying time of business for me. And it has been the most challenging time of business for me in my 30 year career. And the reason being is because cleaning is so specific to the COVID pandemic. And so every question, every answer, every conversation has been dealing with the COVID pandemic from manufacturers to cleaning companies, to the business owners of cleaning companies that clean houses. Should we clean? Should we sanitize? Should we disinfect? We launched our learning library at the beginning of this year. And all of a sudden, all of the courses that I had prepared for my, my group now became second fiddle or, or of second interest because what happened and what was on the forefront was the COVID pandemic. And how do we integrate that? Then trying to reconnoiter the, the learning library so that it had new updated information required a whole bunch of stuff. So I was thinking what I'm feeling from my heart feeling like it's being ripped out of my chest is just stress from the weirdness of the business. But then I started thinking, what if it's not? What if I actually have COVID? What does that mean? 
So I went down and I got tested the same day that my husband had his second test. And we went down to CVS and we went through the drive through where you don't even get out of your car. They give you the packet of information through the window, you do the swabs, and then you put it inside the bag and you drop it inside the lab corp container and you wipe the container down and you drive off. You never even contact a, a human. But there I was in the car with my husband because I'd been around my husband. And so I'm thinking to myself, if he has it, I probably do as well. So we started looking for symptoms that we both shared, which were few. We both had completely different symptoms. He had a fever of 103.9 for 11 days straight. And so for him, it was really, his entire body was just shutting down and he was sweating profusely and he was hyperventilating. And both of us were on our last breath, which is a common uh, symptom that we both shared. It was like, <laughs> like that, I mean, we, we could not breathe. Okay, so the other symptom that we both shared is we both lost our sense of smell and taste, which is kind of scary because even in the cleaning world, I opened uh, some bleach. Bleach for me has always had a really strong smell. And if I just take a big woof of bleach, of course, my eyes turn bloodshot and it's just so overpowering that, you know, you, you don't want to do that at all. And just to see if I did in fact have any sense of smell, I opened the bleach and I'm like, I can't smell anything. My husband said, I can't either. And I'm like, okay, that's really spooky because neither of us can smell or taste anything. And I made us a sandwich, couldn't taste it. We could taste the texture, but there was zero flavor. I'm like, okay, this is not good. Okay, so realizing that we both possibly had COVID, I went on high alert shutdown and this is where the coping mechanism comes from. My business is a business of no drama. And so there's not a single person on my team that is not human. And so if I were to say, oh, hey, I think we have COVID. Oh my goodness, the business would have just gone into all kinds of excitement. So I didn't want to do that because as your body starts to shut down a little bit and it starts to go into this kind of hibernation mode, you have less and less energy to feel those kinds of conversations. And so what happened for me, and it was kind of a gradual process, but once it happened, it kind of took about six weeks to go in and out of it. What happened is it was kind of like erasing part of my brain. And although I was able to function and I was able to carry on normal conversations, there are a lot of reasoning techniques and problem solving solutions that left me. And I've never been in this situation in my life. It was incredibly scary for me during this COVID period. Uh, but one of the things that happened for me is I remember one night I had made some pizza in the oven. And I remember it was time to get the pizza out of the oven. And I went and I stood in front of the oven and I said, I I'm supposed to take the pizza out but I'm missing something. What am I supposed to have? Oh yes, I'm, it, it's hot. I'm going to burn myself if I don't have some kind of a hot pad or something. So I grabbed a, a cleaning cloth, like a, a hand towel that was clean, and I went to take the pizza out of it. And then I froze. I was like, no, no, that's not what you do. This will keep you from getting burned, but there's something else that you put the pizza on. You don't put it on a cloth. And then I was like, oh, a tray. I'm missing the tray. So there were normal things that normally I would just do automatically because that's, that's the world that I live in. It's automation, it's system, you know, systems and systemization. All of that was gone. And my husband being incredibly OCD, one time I walked in the kitchen and the refrigerator door was open. And I was like, um, okay, I don't think that's supposed to be open. Why is the refrigerator door open? And it wasn't like, oh, hey, the refrigerator door is open and you automatically close it. I was trying to think, is that right or is that wrong? And it's wrong, right? We should keep the refrigerator door closed. But all of those pieces of my brain were just gone. Okay, so coping. The coping part of it was I had to realize that things are different for a little bit. And then realizing in that moment, I have to, I have to go on high alert because now I realize I'm not functioning at high gear. I'm not, I'm not myself. I'm not on my A game. Now, I never did have a fever. I did not have the diarrhea or any of those things. I did lose my sense of smell and touch and part of my brain. And I, the heart thing and the breathing was a struggle for me from the beginning all the way through until the time that I healed. And we did not have any team members come over for a good month. We waited until the house was completely quarantined. And this goes to the next section of how did you clean? I had to walk myself through this because I am a cleaning fanatic. And so germs, right? There I was having COVID, realizing I'm not functioning on my A game. I'm going to give myself permission not to clean right now. And because I've isolated us in the home, there is no new strands or threads of threat coming into the home. So there's no COVID coming in. There's no COVID going out. 
The virus can't live on its own forever. Eventually it has to die down on the surfaces and what have you. And then I can go ahead and I can clean them when I'm back to my A game. One of the things that I was most afraid of because I didn't have the, the ability to communicate properly was that I didn't want a whole bunch of people calling to check in on me every day to have those conversations like, what are the symptoms today? How are you feeling? All that stuff. I just really wanted to isolate it so that I could function with the few resources that I had available to me. Okay, so the interesting thing about this is when I started cleaning again, it was room by room and it was as much as I could do in the course of a day. Then I would go to the next room and I would totally sanitize and wipe everything down from top to bottom just to make sure that the house was ready to go again before I had anyone back in the house. All right, so during the COVID thing, one of the things that I learned, I learned that at any moment in our business, something could happen where you lose all of your normal functioning abilities. It could be an accident, it could be COVID, it could be dementia, it could be Alzheimer's, it could be anything. And so during that time, what have you taken, what steps have you taken to safeguard your business in the event that this happens? Now, one of the things that I believe in are systems. And so I set up systems in my business, even though my business has pivoted a little bit and we're doing a lot of online training right now, one of the things that really caught my attention was although I was out of commission for about five and a half weeks, while I was out of commission, my team produced a daily YouTube show and podcast and blog for you every single day. So I had pre-recorded some shows and they went to task and they completely made every step of that production happen without me. And I sat there saying, oh wow, that is so awesome. Okay. So you, you have to set up your business in such a way that if something were to happen, does it run without you? Or do you have a fail safe in place where you will then sell your business at a certain place or a certain point? So there are steps along the way, but as far as coping went, there was really nothing I could do. Uh, my husband had the same brain erasure. And so he would try to communicate with me and he would do like this. I need a uh, couldn't even come up with a sentence. And I'm trying to guess a thermometer, uh, ibuprofen. What does this mean? And then he would say blanket. Uh, no, this is a wrong gesture for blanket. Okay. <laughs> so we were struggling communicating with each other. What happens if we get old and we, we get dementia and we can't communicate with each other? What happens? And, and what are the fail safes in place? And so that has to be taken care of as well. It was a huge eye opening experience for me, realizing that no matter how careful you are, you can still connect with this virus. And once you connect with it, it can take you down in a variety of different ways. There's no cleaning during COVID. You have to lie down, you have to rest, you have to take the time off and then just wait until all of the virus itself kind of kills itself out. And then you can go ahead and start cleaning and picking up the pieces where you left off. Now, a few people that are close to me have asked me since then, did you have a bunch of people come in and fog and disinfect and all that stuff? No, I didn't. I didn't because the virus is not still active and still happening after weeks of quarantine. And so cleaning and sanitizing my house is probably all we need. Again, we are not a hospital operating room. We did not bring anyone in. There was no reintroduction of germs to our house while we had COVID. It was just a really unfortunate situation that could happen to anyone. So I do have firsthand experience with it. Um, I really don't wish it on anyone. This is, it is a brutal, brutal virus. And the people that I've talked to that are in our network that have had it, we have all shared the same, my brain didn't work. I couldn't complete sentences. Things that I normally do on autopilot were not autopilot anymore. It was like unraveling that. Anyway, good news, we pulled through and we are both healthy now and we are back to our old fashioned selves. And my team, thank you to my team who kept my business up and running through the entire process of it all because my business could have easily just completely collapsed. Anyway, so fascinating, fascinating experience. Like I say, I don't wish it on anyone, but I'm glad we're on the other side of it. And if you've had COVID or you know somebody who has, please feel free to share your experiences below because I do believe that by sharing this, we can all learn something from each other. Until then, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.